sticking with this trend of good news. And just because it's not good news here doesn't mean it doesn't apply to being good news elsewhere. We could very much have good news going on if folks wanted to. But we seem hell bent on wanting to have bad news. So I talk about the bad news, I do. But we have to talk about the good news too. And this is for another nation. You know, I actually saw this before someone confirmed it. They confirmed it after I saw it. Basically what I'm saying is one of our neighbors, our closest neighbor, is about to really be flourishing. Who knows, we might reap some benefits of it. They're very close to us. And we know this neighbor very well. Mexico. Now you're going to think that I've gone crazy local, but I haven't. Mexico is about to be, I want to say like Switzerland. And you're not going to really understand why until I tell you. No, it's not because they have a lot of money. No. Not yet, anyway. It actually has nothing to do with wealth or finance. Which is odd and interesting. No. It has to do with population and a quirk of population. You see, Mexico has a very young population. A lot of its people are between the age of 18 and 35. It's a very young population of people. Now, you say, what does that have to do with anything? It's just some young people. You have to see young people like an investment. And a lot of older people don't understand this concept. You see, young people, they're young. So they haven't done all the things you've done. They haven't made all the mistakes you've made. And they're eager to do things. So when you have a young population, wherever it is, you're really sitting on a treasure trove. And a lot of countries are sitting on treasure troves. But it just so happens Mexico I think it's going to really flourish. And we're going to start hearing and seeing it next year, very soon. January. You're going to start hearing about Mexico doing very well. And then you're going to start hearing about stories of Mexico youth, young people in Mexico, starting businesses, startups, all kind of innovative stuff. It's going to be happening in Mexico. Here's the thing though, I think, and this is just a hunch, nobody told me this, it's just my feeling, I think there's going to be a great rivalry between an item that Americans already purchased and something made in Mexico. I already know what I think it is. I have my thoughts on what it is. But I think a lot of Americans are going to want to buy this in Mexico instead of America when they see it. And that's the thing. That's what 
you're going to see a lot of investment. You know, Mexico with youth, because young people want to do things differently too. See, that's another thing that people overlook. They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And this is true. A lot of people, when they get older, are stubborn and stuck in their ways. They see youth as being naive. But sometimes with youth, they change things. They adapt things. They try to make things better. Look, didn't the millennials invent avocado and toast? No, avocado and toast have been around forever. But they changed it. They became more health conscious. And now you can't walk into a place and they not serve avocado and toast. That's true in Mexico. They're very health conscious. A lot of vegan establishments are popping up in Mexico. And if they keep going that way, they're going to corner a market. You see, the West is slipping. Veganism is the way to go. And Mexico is going that way quickly. You know, they still eat pork down there. But now they have a lot of vegan establishments. Lots of vegan food in Mexico. Lots of healthy drinks. They're going back to the fruits, the natural fruits, the papaya, mango, cantaloupe, pineapple, oranges, apples. And they're mixing it with a lot of different nutrients. Turmeric, cayenne. This is what they're doing. They're experimenting. They're innovating. They're creating. Because they're young. And they're ambitious. See, this is another thing. That's a hidden secret weapon that they have. All the young people in Mexico are ambitious. They want to do something. Something beneficial to their nation, their community, and the world. When you have that kind of dynamo, you're going to pop eventually. You're going to make it. So you want to hear about a lot of Mexican citizens who are going to become millionaires next year. And I know what you're thinking. You're saying, oh, they're just a millionaire. That's nothing. Every millionaire started off as a millionaire. A lot of Mexican citizens are going to come out of poverty. They're going to create a lot of innovative things. They're going to change a lot of things. And that's going to make the country profitable, very profitable. And they're going to have a lot of power to say so. Should this country try to reap the benefits? We've treated Mexican people very badly. So if we end up reaping any benefits, it won't be because we deserve it. It'll be because Mexican people don't hold grudges like Americans. Look, a lot of Mexican people are going to say, Americans want to buy this. So we're selling it to the Americans. And they're going to sell it at a cheaper rate than you can find it in America. Look at what's happening already. A lot of people are going to Mexico from America. Young people. And they're staying down there living in Airbnbs for three months, four months. And then some of them are saying, we like it down here. The weather's nice. The people are friendly. The cerveza is good. The party scene is a little blah. But it'll get there. But they like it. And they're wanting to stay longer. 
And in some cases, they're moving complete. This too is going to generate money for the country. I told you, Americans, you're running people away from your country with racism and violence. The lunatic from Mar-a-Lago was not a good investment. I know high society freakish men love that kind of shit. But the rest of the people on the planet don't. Mexico. Now, you say, there's a lot of reasons why this sounds good and flowery, but it'll never happen because. And I know what you're already thinking. So let me say it for you. The drug cartels. Oh, yes, the drug cartels. They're horrible in Mexico. Ruthless. Man, those are some mean Mexicans. But you know what every drug cartel person loves? The peso. Everybody wants the peso. And then the dollar. They love the dollar. They love the yen. And whatever the currency is. The ruble. They love that too. They're just like you. They like money. And the cartel is a profitable, lucrative industry. Hey, but if I got 20 other industries going in my country that are also lucrative, maybe I want to put my cartel jacket away. Now I can build a car. Hey, I don't need to be dope dealing if I can build a car that everybody wants to buy. You know, who do you think is going to have the dopest, flyest car? Probably Mexicans. They know how to fix all the vehicles. You know they put all in all of those add-ins. The low rider, I know, in the 70s and 80s, the low rider vehicles that you saw in Cali, a lot of Mexicans retooled those vehicles, put in the big bass and speakers, the big wheels, the chrome, the design. Those were Mexican Americans, the Chicanos. Now, think about this. They already did it here, but what did they want to do with it in Mexico? A lot of young people are already working on it. Oh, yes. Food, cars, currency, everything, entertainment, everything is getting worked on in Mexico. They have some good clubs. And they play diverse music. Africana. They play that kind of stuff. Afro-Caribbean music in Mexico? I said, hell no. Until my friends started blaring it. I said, now they're playing J-Lo and Bieber and Taylor Swift in Mexico? They said, yeah. I want to say that by next year, you're going to be hearing a lot about Mexico. Oh, yes, you are. They're going to start saying Mexico is like Sweden or Switzerland. Everybody's going to want to go to Mexico. It's going to be the hottest ticket to go to Mexico. Sure, you're going to have a few cartel people, but then when people start to see what's happening, oh, they're going to like what they see. You know, men's warehouse, they say the suit, 
when you see it. You're gonna like the way you look. They guarantee it, right? When those cartel people start to see all of that money from young Mexicans who aren't dealing drugs, going to fancy clubs, when they start seeing that, they're going to like what they see. And they're not like other people. They'll ask their friend, hey, you work there, right? Yeah. Can you get me a job too? Well, you got to have this kind of skill. No. They'll help them get the skill that they need. So they can work with their friends at the job. There's no animosity or hostility. Americans, you got to cut out all of these beefs. You can't even go around another American without them wanting to argue, fight. None of that in Mexico. You were a drug dealer and you were gangbanging against each other, each other because you didn't have money to feed your kids. Now they got two industries in your community that are hired. They'll pay you a good salary. Benefits. And you don't have to worry about getting shot up. Hey, you're both going to probably apply for that job, right? Mexico is going to be booming. I don't say things that I don't know already. I hope we reap some of the benefits by we Americans. But they don't deserve to give you shit, Americans, because you mistreat people. But they're nice and they don't hold grudges. And whatever their success is going to be, we're going to reap a lot of the benefits. If we're still around past December, it's no guarantee. We might get to December 15th and there might not be a country. It's looking that way with Americans. So Mexico might just be by itself. Now some advice for the Mexican people. Be generous and grateful. Be kind. But always remember, Americans didn't like you until you were successful. And that's how Americans are on an individual to individual level. They don't like you when you're trying. They laugh at you. And then when you become successful, they're jealous and despise and hate you. They're just a bunch of haters. So don't allow too many Americans into your country is what I'm trying to get at. You need some haters to be your motivators. So you can have a few of them, but put them to work. Make sure that they're making Mexico profitable. I know a lot of them are coming down there for cheap goods, cheap living, but they can afford to pay more. So maybe raise your rates a little bit for them. They can afford it and they have to be grateful that you're even allowing them in. Because they have a problem allowing other Mexicans into their country. They're not very neighborly. If you know what I mean. And you're supposed to love thy neighbor. And we know Americans don't love Mexico. But Mexico loves America. Funny how that works. Only one president talked about building a wall. I guarantee you next year they're not going to want to talk about building a wall when you start being successful. 
Then they'll say, let us in, let us in. Maybe at that point, you might have to build a wall in Mexico. You might have to pay for it. So many crazy Americans are trying to flee their country. You might not want them. They're not sending their best people. You can always regurgitate what he said. They're sending their rapists and their thieves, right? The Mexican president might say, you're not sending your best people to America. Too many Karens are down here in Mexico City causing a scene. Getting drunk and sloppy, falling on the ground, demanding English menus. You're not sending your finest people. They might say that. Anyway, congratulations, Mexico. Just because Americans are not neighborly doesn't mean we aren't. And I know I kind of speak for Americans, but we go way back, so you know. It is what it is. I'm an unofficial, official American. Look, I'm looking forward to their successes. I really am. I'm looking forward to what they produce. I've already sampled some of it, and it was delicious. It was really good. Young Mexicans are very innovative and creative. So you're going to start seeing a lot of entertainment blossom in Mexico. Comedians, comics, publications, news, entertainers, actors, actresses. It's all going to blossom out of Mexico. Now, is this going to surprise the Mexican government? Like overwhelming surprise them. Absolutely. The Mexican government doesn't think this is going to happen. If the Mexican government sees this, they're going to say, this owl's lost its mind. Crazy. Saying crazy things out loud. But remember, I know things the governments don't know. I know the people. The governments don't know the people. Governments don't know you citizens. I want you to understand that. No government knows its citizens truly. Citizens complain about the government all the time. The government doesn't even know what the complaint is 99% of the time. They don't know you. Congratulations in advance, Mexico, on your successes. I wish you the best. It's going to really be spectacular. A lot of Mexican people are going to be surprised here in America. They're going to start hearing about it. Mexican Americans are going to start hearing about Mexico, what's happening down there. They're going to say, no, that's not true. No shit. Can't be. We're doing better up here than you. They're like, really? Are you that? I'm making about $500 equivalent a month in Mexico. They're going to say, what? What are you talking about? Do you know a lot of Mexican Americans don't make $500 a month? They're going to start making that in Mexico real quick. In pesos. And more. We're going to have to compete to keep Mexican Americans in our country. And not flee to Mexico. Next year. Mark my words. You already start to see the price increases at places like Taco Bell and McDonald's. Jack in the Box. Why do you think that is? They have people in those countries. They know what's coming. I tell you things in advance. So you do what you will with. I love the Mexican people. I love this view. I love the country. They are nice and generous people. And I wish them all the best and successes. 
always remain positive. Even during hard times, remain positive. And you come out ahead. 